Well played. So, welcome to the show, Hero. Thank you. Well, thank you all. Thank you all, as I think you say in Finland. Yeah. I know that when you grew up in Joensu, yeah. uh, you started out, like many of us, probably with some good topics and some inherited items from your other family members. But can you remember any of your first sets when it comes to people they put? System parts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's used a lot in film to be quite. Uh, I remember Indy Transport, which was a city set from maybe 1991 or 1992. Uh, it was really just before I was poor, but, but I had it. it was a light truck with few Formula 1 cars, and there was actually a bit of offset in its part of it, was five studs wide. Yeah. And I find that that quite exciting as if you got into some four wide part and then a one wide part next to each other. It was quite cool, I and mean, it has some play features. I mean, I'm not into like, cars or formal cars, but I like that as a kid. Because it has a play feature. Yeah, and it, it was a big set for me <laughs> yeah. at the time. Yeah, yeah. It's about, about this size. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Four boy. So, I'll stop dropping Google Translate and Finnish phrases into this interview. But, <laughs> but I just had to have some because I love the way the Finnish language just rolls across the top. Um, I've read that your dark ages lasted about six months and yeah. happened when you were nine. Yeah. Can you explain? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, children are weird, as you probably know. Uh, and I was a bilingual kid, and I had to say, a bilingual piece of horror head call, if somebody knows bilingual parts. And you can make a quite easy connection with that one, which can be under uh, stuck in an axle in certain place and then just can do it all. And I made it, I was, uh, I was like confused and uh, I like, felt that bit great <laughs> with, with that piece, and I was like, oh no, no, this can't happen. And, and I was just so shocked that I, I didn't play play the Lego for, for a few months, and then I get back to the system, and uh, maybe a couple of months for that, I get back to the bilingual parts again, and then I just took a knife from somewhere, and I go, the pages, it, it maybe took 30 seconds or so, but that was uh, like, Critical hit to my Lego part. <laughs> you became disillusioned with the Lego because you couldn't remove the parts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was a shock. I get that. But, but apart from that, you pretty much kept building. Uh, when did you discover the online Lego community? Uh, in 2007, I joined the uh, Eurobricks and our uh, Finnish Lego community and Brickshop and started posting my models. And I joined uh, our lab in 2008. And we had our first event in 2009, so I was called the end, I was 30. Mm -hmm. So I've been uh, in the community for very long for my age. Yeah. Um, I have only ever met one Finnish F44. Uh, uh, we figured out his name probably. Dor Kukka, maybe. Yes, I think that, that, that's him. But it was at Steam in the UK a few years ago, yeah. and as I have traveled quite a bit to Lego conventions, I, I assume. Your fellow countrymen don't really do that so much, um, which means we don't necessarily know, we as an audience, don't necessarily know that much about the Lego scene in Finland. Can you tell us a bit about Palikatako? Yeah, Palikatako okay. is our Lego name out there. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we are quite active. Uh, we have uh, several exhibits uh, a year. All our events are open to public. Uh, we have some after hours activities, but mostly it's just ex exhibiting creations. For people, we have uh, like a local weather, which sells new sets and used bricks, and they have been organizing events for some years, and they have been lots of those for the last two years. Other women in some small towns and, and big towns, and we have a good biggest event right now, now in Helsinki. Uh, so we have uh, 50 lab members, maybe 30 that I know. Uh, and most of our lab members are builders, or the active ones are builders at least, but also in events there are a lot of children and families bring their sets and all models. So it's, they are all around Lego happenings, not just April conventions. Yeah. And they're quite popular, and they quite a lot of them, so I think that's one reason why there are not so much Finnish people in the international events, because they are quite busy with with our own, own events. Of course, there's also a like Baltic sea, which makes uh, traveling here a bit trickier than, than some of the stuff like Germans or Swedes. And probably also language, because Finnish language is very different from uh, most other European languages. Yeah, well, we have got used to that, and Finnish people speak English quite well. Of course, there are some older land members who don't have such good English skills, so I think that might be uh, less easy for them to, to travel. Yeah. But I think most of them. 
which go just fine. <laughs> what you are arguably most famous for within the international labor community are your impressive figures. Um, what is it that appeals so much to you about building people? Well, it's sort of not very common uh, of this uh, thing. Uh, and it's of course a challenge to make uh, living organic things and clothes which are like soft and bendy and like for example the joints are hard to do because but if you are trousers you have like cloth all over but you have some gaps with plastic and it's a difference mostly but also because I have been doing it for some sort of so so I have been developing it but I enjoy it very much and well, there's something very interesting in, in like people and how their character and appearance can be made in the level form. So there's a lot of a variation of style among these builds, from sleek and graceful female figures to big, bulky, armored fantasy warriors, uh, busts of funny cartoon-like characters. What kind of figures do you enjoy building the most, and what kind of different challenges do building different figure types present? Well, I like variety. Uh, I don't, in a way, like maybe doing too many similar builds in a row, but sometimes it's not so, so serious, really. Uh, like the female characters, which are quite graceful and elegant, are the same trying to do. They are probably the farthest from your average Lego brick team or yeah. team, except to see for a Lego brick creation. So I, I enjoy that contrast. And also trying to find the uses for weird pieces in those. And I mean, other figures, for example, I like really being beards and, and hairs and, and mustaches and things like that. And like my more humorous figures usually start from the head. But for example, these female figures might start from anywhere, like from a feet or leg or jacket or something. Yeah. Hey, you like building beards, so do you consider building yourself? Yeah, I have. Uh, but I haven't got it in. I had one uh, glass ball figure which was a bit of a like, uh, self portrait, but not really. And I, I recently made an uh, oil painting of a self portrait. So. Okay. And, and I know my studies in the first year, I had to make a self portrait. So. I've been done first, but not on the leg of it. Uh, does the diversity mean also that the inspiration for a figure can come from pretty much anywhere? Yeah, of course. Uh, maybe nowadays a bit over half of my figures are just our characters, so the inspiration really comes from anywhere, but usually not from any one particular source. I, I like to mix things and I like to take pieces and use them myself like the seed part or the beginning mm -hmm. thing, thing on operation. So yeah. Yeah, you, you mentioned, um, talking about parts, you mentioned bionicle earlier. Yeah. Uh, you use bionicle parts in quite a few of these figures, and while there's, there's a substantial bionicle following in the US, which means that most US conventions have a few bionicle figures on display, at European shows they seem to be much rarer, and even combining bionicle and system parts like you do, it seems unusual. I suspect that most of the people here look at bionicle parts as weird stuff that is difficult to connect. But what do these pieces add to your builds? Well, bionicle parts are interesting. They're very hard to use. You should not at all bionicle pieces because it's much harder than system building and challenging. Yeah, I've been moving to more system because you can usually do the same shapes of bionicle parts with some system parts. But it's easier because these virtual parts always, always have those annoying jobs of things, places you didn't want them to be, and they have maybe worse uh, connection points. But they also, some of them look very interesting in a way that can be captured in a level form. There are some marble pieces and some transparent pieces and some like flame, flame pieces and so like that. And I think it's like a price is built over the average. If it has in as its beginning point to pass something unusual and not much think about by the coming to 
Yeah, it's probably also it, it's uh, there's a lot of more organic shapes and, as well and curves to, to some of the devices. Yeah, they have had newer option figure parts uh, from, from the CCBS uh, system. Uh, also, the bicycle parts are very like chunky and grippy and uh, very complicated looking. But they are I somewhere at newer like cell pieces are good for some knees and yeah. sleeves and sort of that. But a bit, uh, Taste for the usual like sleeve shape, like the stacked uh, brown bricks. So if you stack a shell on the end, it looks like for all that. Yeah, looks like. Yeah. Uh, most of your characters originate in fiction, uh, books, movies, games, and so on. But you also built a few representations of real people. There is Hans Lundset, a Norwegian with the world's longest beard. Uh, yeah. Um, and then because you're a music person, you built one of your favorite bands, Circle, yeah. which is now in the Lego House, which yeah. you might have seen on uh, on Thursday. Uh, how is it different to build a real person compared to a character? Well, uh, real person, you of course look like the portrait of the person or some bigger material or whatever. Uh, I took a lot of pictures about Circle of Circle as they say in Finnish. Uh, <laughs> Uh, on a gig, um, like a couple of years ago, and then I just wanted to capture the proportion of the face, like the distance between nose and eye and mouth. It's very important, uh, the eyes and the eyebrows. It's a, it has very much character because even of this on this scale. Yeah, yeah. When a human recognizes other human, I think they mostly use this area with eyes and eyebrows. So that's, that's very important, and it's also place where there's lots of emotion. So capturing the like how they look and eat them is also important in the circle approach. Facial appearance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also the, the poster, like uh, one of the guitarists, the other restaurant is by the hands, uh, usually when he's playing a guitar, uh, other ones too. So I added the added hand joint on the stomach, so he can hands much a bit, and also. He's quite skinny, so his uh, like hip joint was only forced, so that's why he took up third. And then there was the drummer, Tobi Leppanen, who's also called Leppasit, because he always sits very strong and it's, he's like a stick. Okay. He's thin, and so I didn't want to add very like natural uh, hatchet balls, he's just yeah, yeah. bricks over bricks. Yeah. And some criticize that uh, about Flicker actually. Uh, I think it's logical, yeah, but if you see me playing drums, he, I think he looks pretty well like, like the real yeah. yeah. Have you ever been able to show any of your bills to the real picture of people depicted? Well, uh, not in, like, in person, but Sirke has seen them up and they use as their Facebook either, so something like it. They use a picture of yours yeah, on their yeah, Facebook page. Yeah, yeah, on their main either. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I have sent a picture of, about it in the Lego house too. Yeah. I'm interested in. Oh, that's good. That's good. Uh, one of your latest characters differs quite a lot from the others you built in that it's a robot. Uh, Hubot, to be specific. Uh, a robot that puts together the posts about site statistics on Brickset. Yep. Um, and it selects the random set of the day, or not so random when it comes to crickets. Um, <laughs> but nobody knew what Hubot looked like until your version won the contest hosted by the robot's namesake, the real Hugh, who runs Brickset. Can you tell us how you approached that challenge? Well, robots see the logical choice for what? Uh, then you know that there's like two main teams of home electronics. You have been selling a power field, so <laughs> you might know that. Yeah, yeah. There are like masculine, black, sleek uh, electronics things, and then soft, roundy, white electronics things yeah, yeah. around in the house. And I went with this white, round thing because I think who would who give us a random toys and stuff should be for the friendly looking. Yes, yes. And then I wanted to have something like pixel like appearance with those big round eyes because I think they're fantastic. They have the most maybe characteristic like a pieces ever. Yeah. They took the eyes so I gave him a couple of things and then I wanted to include uh, this bridge logo and I thought the brain would be like the devil center of the robot so I got another dome. I experimented with uh, different dome pieces, they need to go long ones, then they don't come to those flying things. But I started with the whole photon from the old piece. And then he got the tracks because I really had no idea for legs which could be postured and the tracks felt nice. And I, I'm especially happy with uh, both, but uh, 
hubcaps you can take in to say why from both and they are my favorite pieces. Okay. And then uh, Talbot has his uh, version which is based on the version from Calvin and Hobbes comic. Okay. Uh, one classic. The cards. Yeah, I want it not to be too like a stereotypical robot character, so I gave him something very different from the aesthetics of the robot thing. As a sub kids chariot with that's quite a natural bit of the Lego things. Yeah, there are some sets in it. Yeah, that's it. So, uh, it's a fun thing because I had one of those sets printed tiles and I don't really use briefing, so it was going to have only one set, but then I went to uh, England in Finland and there was a big table of random pieces and I found like six of those <laughs> tiles. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that's cool. You should check it out. The, the, the robot it looks, uh, it looks great and, and super friendly. Um, on Flickr, in addition to your characters, you mainly posted minifigs, so-called thing parts, groups of custom minifigures built from regular Lego pieces, um, and builds from one particular topic, which is quite logical considering you're currently studying in Tampere to become an architect. Uh, you build modular buildings. Uh, but not just any modulars, your modulars are intricate and ornate designs, mainly in Art and Wall style, yeah. which allows you to build very elaborate facades. Yeah. Uh, what do you enjoy much so much about the modular buildings? Well, uh, I'm into Art of War, or you can still the architecture of the turn of the 19th century. Uh, no, 20th century, of course. So, some of in, in my hometown, and the Finnish style is very quite a different from what you usually expect for that style. It's not so well elaborated, it's very strong and sturdy and like maybe even castle-like, in a way. And I study architecture, so I have to take granted all the technical details and real-life living things. And for different, I just like to do some free form, like completely free from any real things, architectural things. Yeah. And it's these historical buildings. Because in real life, they can be done in a way they were made uh, over 100 years ago, because the expanse of work and, and the materials is so different. They are based on the handicraft mostly, which is so expensive yeah. these days that it would be just too expensive to be houses like that. But in Lego, it's possible, and I can uh, like fulfill my dream of homes better than yeah. in Lego than in school projects or real buildings. And they, they really come alive with, with little meetings on them. It gives them the scale and my modulars don't have like floors or back walls or anything because I'm focusing all my pieces to the things that are actually visible for four people. Mm -hmm. They are the more all the more detailed for it, the, the facades. Do yeah. you get to apply what you learn through your studies when you build modulars? Well, not much because the architect class studies are quite far from those things. But of course there are some uh, like some What's the word? Not actual thing, but you know. Yeah, that's the word. That's yeah. the word. Thing with massing and like arrays and things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And putting windows and so on. Yeah, yeah. that's the yeah. yeah. okay. um, I have to ask you also about a certain Lego piece, or rather a Duplo piece that we also talked about yesterday on the talk show, the big green Duplo grass, because. The builder who was beaten narrowly by Jonas, uh, my guest yesterday, in that Iron Builder round was you. Yeah. Um, how did you react to being given a big weird piece like that as a seed part and uh, that you had to include in your mock for a whole month? I was maybe slightly shocked because many of these parts in Iron Builder have been very nice, yeah. very convenient. Easy to use. Yeah, easy to use, but this wasn't. Uh, <laughs> but I have said to Guy Heber that surprised me, so I couldn't probably play myself. Uh, we met it afterwards. Yeah, but many people have said that it's been a great run, so Absolutely. so no bad feelings. <laughs> but I just had to make a list of ideas. I have it at least afterwards in a one lecture, actually. Just because there are not so many options. And at the time I was uh, finishing a big layout of model buildings for a local museum, it was a uh, human beings in it, so yeah. I had I didn't have like almost any basic bricks in big quantities in one call, so 
if basically yeah, made it to end learning to be the huge piece in a creative skill more difficult because I just could reduce a small part of the okay, so you have to build something around it. Yeah, yeah, it had to be the defining factor of the piece. Yeah. What does a thing like that do to your creativity? Well, it was cool, yeah. I can't complain really. I mean, you can't be creative with, uh, when you have all kinds of species there and you can do what you want. I don't know if uh, restriction really, in the long run, makes you a better leader. But then again, also the added pressure of yeah, having to build something again and again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. I, but it was a, I think it was really big fun. Yeah. Completely. I, I use it as a some sort of plant in at least three pieces. It's just not maybe the most uh, <laughs> original one and twice as a hair because I'm a character builder yeah. <laughs> too. But yeah, it was a nice time. And I made 10 builds, but this was my goal from the beginning. Not too bad with a piece like that. Final question, Ero. Uh, you described yourself, you have described yourself as an artist who just happens to have chosen Lego bricks as one of his media, as you yeah. said, you also paint. Um, and I'm sure we'll all agree that you're certainly an artist, but does this artist know what he will do next? Well, I have uh, at least three or four bits that have been finished and photographed and then posted. So you can accept some large scale speeder bikes. I have one in, in display in Hull. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One or two, I don't know. Uh, and it, they are in the same, same style as scale drivers, so I might do some kind of uh, driving contest with this, and it's going to be quite a big. I'm not doing all the scenery and things, but some uh, supporters and cheers and a public seller and, and things like that. I'm also thinking that when I have my circle banding in Lego House that I should make a Black Sabbath's original lineup because they're having a 50th anniversary of the H2 Plus albums, Black Sabbath Paranoid next year, so that could be nice. It's, it's uh, four figures and three of them should have like big beard, so... so. <laughs> <laughs> the perfect challenge. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming in.